Oh hey, I'm not in the gym. This is an airline lounge. Good morning from a rainy London today. I'm on my way to the Virgin upper class wing at Heathrow Terminal 3 and we're gonna fly to Tampa on Virgin's brand new A330neo in upper class. Let's check it out. As we approach the entrance barrier, I have to confirm my name before being allowed into the upper class wing entrance. This is a completely separate drive-in entrance for Virgin upper class passengers. No other airline has anything like this at Heathrow, not even BA for their first class passengers. Inside, there's the upper class check-in area with seating and model planes. There are only a few desks here, but there was no queue and I was able to get my boarding pass in no time. For those not arriving by car, you'll have to use the regular entrance, but you can then take a lift to use the private security lane that I'm about to use. Once past security, I made my way through duty-free and followed the signs for lounge H. Up the stairs, or up in this lift with a sofa, I presented my boarding pass and made my way into the Virgin Atlantic Clubhouse. Before we tour the lounge, I'm gonna grab a quick breakfast. What else but champagne to start the day? Uh, and with some X-Ray out too, a favourite of mine. Now, let's start with the fun stuff. Up these stairs, there's a games room with a pool table. Go on then, quick break. Guess I'm solids. Up another set of stairs, we can find the garden. This is the only lounge in Heathrow with an outdoor rooftop. Today wasn't the best of days for it, but I can imagine this is a great spot to chill in summer, with great views of the airport all around. Back inside, if you'd rather stay in the dark, there's a big screen with news and sports with these oversized sofas. There's a quiet area around the corner which is noticeably quieter than the main lounge. The seating is split into sections for couples or solo travellers and no food is allowed in this section. I like how this area has been styled and the loungers are super comfortable. If you're feeling sporty, there's a peloton studio with three bikes and views of the ramp. Small towels are provided here, but if you do put in a particularly good session, showers are available too. There's a decent amount of space here with towels provided and everything else you need to freshen up. Staying on theme, there are two sets of toilets on either side of the lounge. The mini towels to dry your hands are always a nice touch, but I have to be honest, the smell was pretty bad in both of the toilets on either side of the lounge. Anyway, with my tank empty, it was time to fuel up. I hit the centerpiece of the lounge, this long cocktail bar, and ordered the Bloody Mary. While I'm enjoying that, let's not forget there is seating all around the lounge in various shapes and styles. You won't struggle to find a section that suits your needs and get comfortable. If you just want to chill, or sit by the window, or order some food, or do some work, there'll be a spot for you. All this touring has made me hungry again, so I made one last visit to the restaurant to check out the a la carte all day menu. Baked chicken wings up first, followed by chicken tikka masala, rice, poppadom with sauces and naan. The obligatory glass of champagne and this big cookie for dessert. Perfect timing as boarding was announced just as I took my last bite. I left the lounge and made my way to the gate where I saw the A330-900neo will be flying on today. Down the jet bridge and onto the plane, the crew checked my boarding pass and pointed me to my seat. I love the purplish ambient lighting in the cabin. And here's my seat, 8A. I was offered a pre-departure beverage of champagne and got comfortable. We'll have a look at all the seat features after takeoff, but since I was one of the last to board, it was time to strap in the three-point seat belt and taxi towards the runway. After takeoff, the crew handed me a hot towel, which was shortly followed by a tiny bowl of crisps and more champagne. While I enjoy that, let's have a look around the seat. The seat recline and lighting controls are right next to you. There's an international power socket and both USB-A and C charging. A wireless charging pad right here. A small storage area with a vanity mirror. The reading light is just behind that. The IFE remote is hidden under here with another vanity mirror. 
more seat controls for quick access when in the sleeping position. The tray table can be pulled out and unfolded, and it's also adjustable forwards and backwards. Straight ahead is the 17-inch 4K screen. This is the most modern and responsive touchscreen I've seen in the sky. You can pair your Bluetooth headphones instead of using the provided ones. To the side of that, there's a coat hook. Then of course, as is becoming standard for new business class seats these days, a closable suite door for added privacy. Although I found the suite still fairly private, even with the door open, and the short height of it won't stop anyone walking past looking in, open or closed. The seat itself is pretty comfortable. I like the color palette they've gone for, and the pillow definitely helps with back comfort. Despite that, I did find it a tiny bit cramped around the legs when reclined a bit. You can see how my movement is restricted in my right leg here. This is what the seat looks like fully flat, but we'll check out the bedding and sleeping setup later in the flight. But for now, I think it's time for lunch. I had a look at the menu, but I had actually pre-ordered my main course online, which is a nice touch to ensure you get the choice you want. My table was set with the placemat, cutlery, these cool golden plain shaped salt and pepper shakers, water, bread and butter, and of course, champagne. I had the salmon gravid lax for starters, served with pickled cucumber, grain mustard mayonnaise, and pumpernickel bread. For mains, I had the lobster and crab tortellini, which was an exclusive pre-order online menu item. The apricot and almond cake was for dessert, and I finished this all off with a cheese course. This all hit the spot and the cabin crew cleared up my table so I could relax. Time for the toilet review. These are pretty standard plain toilets. The paneling is a darker burgundy shade, which is nice. There's Rem branded hand wash, and I love this little foot pedal to open the paper bin. I hate touching the cover usually. And that's it, does the job. Let's check out the loft. You see this as you board the plane, and it looks like a cool place to hang out and socialize. There's a snack basket and drinks provided in the mini fridge. Full IFE touchscreens with the option to connect up to eight Bluetooth headphones to watch together using the buttons below. This cool looking ceiling light, which is giving the loft that virgin purple hue. Now, the weirdest part of all this, it's just not comfortable to sit here. The seats are way too high up off the ground, so you're sitting on the edge with your tiptoes on the ground. If it was lowered by a few inches, it would be perfect. If you do want to sit here, they have these mini armrests slash tables with USB charging behind. And seat belts, so you don't have to go back to your seat if turbulence unexpectedly hits. Not being able to get too comfortable in the loft, I went back to my seat to do a bit of work. Wi-Fi is available with paid packages or free for a limited time if you watch some ads, which is a nice option to have. A bit of a quirk, the sweet lighting controls only seem to adjust the light under the wireless charging pad, which didn't do much to light up the rest of the seat. Also, the individual air vents were much appreciated as the cabin got fairly warm by this point. I was getting a bit tired, but let's check out the amenity kit before sleeping. Virgin provides everything in this recycled bag which contains an eye mask, a pair of socks, toothpaste, Ren branded moisturizer, Ren lip balm, earplugs, a toothbrush, Ren hand cream, and a pen. A decent kit with a sustainable touch. Time to kill a few hours and get some sleep. Turndown service is provided, but I decided to make my bed myself. The cabin crew saw me doing this and jumped to offer to help, but I was pretty much done. Turndown service isn't something you usually see in business class, so thumbs up for Virgin here. I got into bed, and I have to say the bedding is pretty comfortable. But, as I try to get comfortable, even though the cubby hole is deep enough, the lateral movement is a bit restricted, which was noticeable when moving or turning around. I did manage to find a good position in the end, closed my door, and got a few hours of sleep in. I woke up not long before landing and just in time for the second meal service. I chose the buttermilk chicken slider, it came with crisps, not sure what the ketchup is for here, and I had it with the orchard margarita cocktail. The chicken was surprisingly crispy and I enjoyed this for a light dinner, or breakfast meal, I'm not sure. My table was cleared up and I chilled for a bit before we started our descent into Tampa. So, what do I think of Virgin Atlantic's upper class? To start with, I think the clubhouse is a great lounge and one of the best at Heathrow, especially considering it's a business class lounge. It has unique features for the airport like the upper class wing entrance and the rooftop terrace. It did get pretty busy at one point, but this will depend on your departure time. On board, I love the colour scheme and mood lighting. 
The loft is a cool concept, but I didn't see many people using it. The seat itself was comfortable, although movement was a bit restricted when reclined or sleeping. I enjoyed the food, and the cabin crew were all super friendly. This is definitely a huge improvement over their old school coffin seats, but I'll have to fly their A350 seat variant to make a comparison there. Let me know what you think in the comments, and make sure to hit like and subscribe. Till next time.